Hi everyone. For the last couple of weeks I've been talking extensively about the theory of the disposable true single fibre EMG needles, but what's it like in real clinical practice? The first thing to say is that these needles aren't super sharp. Because they're disposable straight out of the packet, they never need to be resharpened again, and they just go straight through the skin into the muscle, no problem at all. And from my personal perspective, it's no different to using a standard concentric needle electrode that you'd use on the limbs. Really no different in terms of the insertional feel whatsoever. The differences that are actually thereafter in that in when it comes to manipulating the needles as compared to the 30 gauge facial ones, it's less easy to do so because they are less flexible. Of course, they are of a wider girth than those counterparts and also uh, probably relating to the fact that they've got this resin down the um, center shaft um, insulating the actual recording core. And so those combined together will mean that it's trickier to actually manipulate the needle within the muscle tissue itself. This has a potential negative effect when you're actually trying to find those uh, pairs when you're doing a volitional study and it becomes that little bit more trickier than with the disposable uh, facial needles, uh, which I'm personally more used to doing and dealing with. However, when it comes to the stimulated studies, actually it's a lot easier in many respects because the needle is that bit thicker, it maintains its position, and it's got less wibble um, as compared to the facial ones, which are more prone to movement and to potential slippage. There is another consideration as well, and this is something particularly for paediatric practice, in that the recording zone of the needles is several millimetres below the actual uh, tip, beneath the bevel, and because of that one actually has to push the needle in that little bit extra, a little bit deeper, in order to actually get to the zone where the muscle fibres are actually generating the signals and therefore being able to pick up those signals. The most natural group of people who may wish to transition to the disposable ones are those centers where the reusable needles are used on a regular basis. The first uh, point is, as I've already mentioned, that these needles are super sharp. You never need to sharpen them up. And because of that, it's, I think, better for a patient to have uh, a less painful experience with a, a razor sharp needle going through. The next point actually relates to that as well, in that if the tip is that bit sharper, it's that little bit easier to manipulate and to maneuver the needle into the appropriate position, and therefore it's also more patient friendly as a result. The next point is in terms of the recording zone, as I've touched on in the last video, which is that the recording zone of the disposable needles are that little bit bigger than for the reusable ones. And because of that, you can hoover up more potentials within the recording zone and sphere, and therefore uh, have a shorter, quicker study where you can get more potentials within a shorter time frame for processing. The next point is, of course, what it says on the tin, in that these needles are, of course, disposable, and therefore one doesn't have issues and risks of contamination from one patient to another. And the final point, really, is that I think when one tallies up the entire cost of the reusable needles, they're probably not that much different to the disposable ones now because the prices have come down so much. Because one's not having to spend time uh, sharpening uh, these needles, one's also not having to autoclave them and uh, make sure that the needles are not contaminated from one person to the next, which also has got a, a cost attached to that. And so therefore, probably there's really not much in it anymore between the uh, unit price of a disposable one relative to the reusable ones. But I'm happy to stand corrected on that point, but I don't think there's sufficient cost and price difference in it to uh, make that a determining factor anymore. The interesting question really is, is it something for people who are used to the facial concentric needle electrodes to switch across from? Let's have a look now through a couple of stimulation studies. The first one's with the concentric needle electrode because that's going to be the baseline to which we compare with. The amplitudes are reasonable. Uh, really, they're not T uh, tiny or small. Uh, the high pass filter here is set to one kilohertz. You can see they're nice clean studies, um, really haven't had to spend much time cleaning them up and um, good clean signal, lots of potentials on the page. Let's now move across um, to some examples using the true single fiber disposable uh, EMG needles. 
First things that you can see here are with the uh, high pass uh, filter at 500 hertz, which is the standard recommended uh, setting for those ones. And I hope you can appreciate what I'm, what I'm about to say is that they just seem a little bit scratchy, uh, a little bit noisy as it were. And um, I don't particularly like the uh, quality of the recording at uh, the high pass of 500 hertz. And so what I ended up doing was actually increasing the high pass filter to one kilohertz, just as I would with the uh, facial concentric needle electrodes. And almost immediately one has a cleaner study, needs less processing uh, thereafter. Next thing to say is probably one of the most obvious points, which is that the amplitude is staggeringly larger um, than for the concentric needle electrodes. Here, the order of magnitude is two to three millivolts um, in size. And if you just contrast that with the study that was uh, published and I talked about in the previous video, um, then you can see you know, it's really important to get your uh, recording zone very close to where the originating fibers are from. And in fact, if you don't have the recording zone right next to the, stim uh, the originating fibers, then one actually has a very significant drop down of amplitude. And I think that really um, just sort of proves the point that I was making uh, in that last video. And so uh, there are some you know, important technical considerations you know, when you're performing these studies. You really have to be on your game. You really have to be very skilled at what you're doing. And you have to be very, very close to those um, uh, fibers which are generating the potential so that you don't get that drop, drop off, um, which uh, is not such an issue really with the uh, facial concentric needle electrodes, which I think overall are more forgiving. You might well be wondering now, which is the way forward uh, for me? I can't say the same necessarily for you, but for me, um, I will be continuing with what I'm used to. I'm used to using the facial concentric needle electrodes. I know how they feel. I know their manipulability. I know their flexibility. Um, I like the fact that one can do different sites with them, uh, which are easily reached at all ages, um, whether it may be um, a pediatric practice, which is part of what I do, or even uh, for geriatric practice even, if you're trying to do bulbar studies, again, it's, I think, a little bit easier to be using the facial concentric needle electrodes, particularly for the volitional studies for that, um, and on that basis, I will be continuing to, to do that. However, at the very least, if you are interested in doing single fiber EMG studies, I would highly recommend that you try out these needles. These are the real McCoy. These are also the recommended way of doing things. So if you're starting out on your single fiber EMG journey, that's definitely something to be thinking about to try and gain practice, try and gain experience and expertise with these particular type of needles. Or alternatively, if you're in a center which uses the reusable single fiber EMG needles, there are plenty of reasons which I've highlighted for moving across to the disposable ones. If you want to find out more about these needles, by all means, check out the Spurs Medical website or the SI EMG uh, site where you can see some more. Um, also, you know, have a look at the Unimed um, website as well. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the uh, description box below. Finally, if you have found this video, uh, series of videos useful, please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing and commenting below. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at some future point for the next video. All the very best.